And welcome back to another edition of 10 Count. We're here at Hollywood Smoke in the beautiful city of Santa Monica. I'm Steve Kim, joined by Michael Montero, Montero Unboxing, and the editor of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher. This Saturday night, we'll all be ringside from the Forum as HBO kicks off its 2018, and we have a championship doubleheader for the vacant WBA 147-pound title, The Machine, Lucas Matisse takes on Tiwa Kiram, and WBA lightweight champion Jorge Linares takes on Mercito Hesta. Uh, Mike, I'll, I'll say this about Kiram. He's tall, he's rangy, he's got some length, can punch a little bit. I, I don't know how well tested he's been in uh, Thailand, but Matisse is 35 years old. If he could take the punch early on, I think it's a real fight. I agree with you. And, you know, we get these fighters coming out of Thailand, sometimes from South America, whether it's Venezuela or Colombia. The records look great, all knockouts, and we don't know until they come up here and, and they fight. And sometimes they surprise us and they're the real deal. We'll find out. Um, Kiram's a lot bigger, stronger, younger. And for Matisse, he's only had one fight since that knockout loss to Postal back in 2015. He looked good last year in Vegas, right, with that win. Emmanuel Taylor. Right, it was a good quality professional prize fighter. He looked very, very good in that fight. But Taylor, not as big and strong, and at least on paper, not as powerful as Kiram. So it'll yeah, be interesting. Taylor's more of a yeah. natural junior welterweight. Exactly. Yeah. But exactly. a serviceable guy, exactly. like a fringe contender. I mean, he gave Adrian Broner hell for 12 rounds. Right. But uh, Doug, you went on record on your mm -hmm. mailbag. Yeah. You, dude, you're with me. Me and you are going to be very embarrassed or we're going to look like geniuses come Saturday night. You think right. Kiram is a live guy here. Well, yeah, here's the thing. I mean, I'm going on the reputation of Thai fighters yeah. and my experience being ringside often um, I'm, I'm looking at an unknown Thai guy. Now, these are the lighter weight classes. We're talking about featherweight and under, actually, often sub bantamweight. weight. Right. But the only times I've ever witnessed a, a, a Thai fighter not give the opponent, even the favorite opponent, hell on, a, on U.S. soil is when they get blown out early. It happened a few times with Finito Lopez, yeah. who's an all-time yeah. great Mexican straw weight. Uh, and it happened once with... Uh, Jorge Arce oh, yeah. um, at like flyweight or something like that. But other than that, every time I see a dude from Thailand, he, I, I, and I can know nothing about the dude. Every time, and he's in with a, a Mexican champion or a US champion or just a favored fighter here on US soil, they are in impeccable condition. They are durable as hell. They're willing to take five to land one and they bring the ruckus. Yeah. So I'm, I'm expecting that in a 147 pound package. We know this about TIE fighters. There's three things that stand out. They all have big legs. <laughs> they all have very long names we can't pronounce. <laughs> and number three, as you said, they're all tough. I mean, from Turtsak Jandang. Oh my God. This guy gave Marquez hell. We were there in Lake Tahoe That's about right. seven, eight years ago. Uh, I remember Jim Rex Jaka also gave a couple of our guys, I believe Marquez, Samong Shur Jatarong, pulled off a huge I witnessed upset. him knock out. That was Ring Shakira Magazine's Gonzalez. fight of the year. 1995, at the Forum, ironically, um, Chiquita Gonzalez is in the Hall of Fame. This is at junior flyweight, and Sir Jatarong was given no shot because he'd been blown out early by yeah. Finito Lopez, mm -hmm. and they went to war for eight rounds. And he, 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 he got up from a knockdown, he put Umberto Gonzalez down, and then stopped him. And also... And then reigned for like 10 title defenses. And by the way, the other guy that we forgot, Sikrasat Sorongvasai. <laughs> I, I mean, How about I, that dude? I mean, that yeah, was, yeah, was, yeah. Is, your, is your classic Steve, prototypical Thai fight. Going into that first fight with Chocolatito, people were saying, why is Chocolatito fighting this tuna? Absolutely. What, Absolutely. Who is this guy? What's he ever accomplished? Don't be blind, folks. The there's, there's badasses from a lot of areas on this, this great planet Earth, and many of them come from Thailand. In Thailand, the way that they train, and I don't know if it comes from the Muay Thai legacy. Um, this guy's from legacy, a Muay Thai background, not the They roll system. with punches. They, yeah. they have a, a way of seeing a punch coming, and they'll eat it. They'll take it into the naked eye. They're taking a punch, but they roll with it in a way that carries the momentum, and they're able to absorb punishment, and they stay in position to punch back. Mm -hmm. And that's what we saw between... Um, uh, Rung Visay and Gonzalez and that first end, well, the yeah. second fight, that was a whole different story. Yeah, also the <clears throat> co-feature on the night, Jorge Linares takes on Mercito Hesta, as I said on another show. Mercito Hesta was supposed to be the next Pacquiao, <laughs> and he has been. Bobby, not Manny. <laughs> uh, I, I think he's got 36 minutes here. Listen, I like Mercito. I think he's a solid fighter. I've always gotten the sense, though, he's never emptied the bucket. 
um, never given full effort where he says, I can't give you any more. If he's ever going to do it, he better do it now because he, I think he's got one shot to make his career worth something on Saturday night. You know, Hester's got talent. Um, what's always been missing, and there's, there's something missing from every performance. He's never had that performance where he's put it all together because he has athleticism. He's got heart. Um, there are, are flashes of skill and ring generalship that are impressive, but you never see it all at once. Uh, you never see him work for three minutes of a round. Um, if he has a good round, often he takes the next round off. It's kind of like he falls asleep at the wheel a little bit. And I chalk it up to just um, a, a, a lack of foundation. He did not have an amateur career. He basically learned how to box as a pro, and he does really well. I mean, he's a fringe contender because he's talented and he has desire. But, um, you know, Jorge Arce had that amateur background, came from a fighting family, a boxing family, um, and he knows his P's and Q's. Now, he is a vulnerable dude. He has, his skin busts up. His chin is not world class. Um, and, and Hester can punch a little bit, but he has to, in my opinion, fight out of character. He no. has to be the aggressor for three minutes of a round, and I don't think I've it's ever seen that. It's not his mentality. He has a sparring partner mentality. He does. Mm. He reminds me of a lightweight Malik Scott in that sense, mm. where Malik Scott, wow. great skills. What a reference. Yeah. I know, cra it's crazy reference, right? But it just the, the sparring partner mentality, mm. that's what I see from Hesta. And, I, and I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. You don't change overnight, especially in your mid-30s. I don't see him putting it all together in this performance. I like Lenar's. Big. Yeah, square pegs don't die around. And, and when, when Malik Scott was an eight-round prospect, I nicknamed him Mr. <laughs> 80 to 72. Yep. Because every fight he'd won eight nothing, and you'd be bored to death. Like you knew the guy had some skill, but the temperament did yeah. not match the talent. But Mike, we were there ringside back. I believe it was September 23rd. Luke Campbell mm -hmm. really neutralized a lot of what Lenares did. Do you chalk that up as a style matchup that kind of troubled Lenares? Absolutely, and I think Lenares started that fight well. I remember he he dropped Campbell. Round I hurt two. his eye. Yeah. When that happens, sometimes you fall in love with the power and you think, oh, I got this guy out of there. Campbell hung tough, but stylistically difficult fight for Linares to look good. I think Hesta is just more made for him, prototypically. And just, they're both southpaws, but totally different. Campbell's yeah, yeah. tall, rangy, Olympic gold medalist. Yeah. Let's go back yeah. to that amateur background. Cam Campbell has yeah. underrated craft. Yes. I'm not putting him up there as an elite level fighter, but he has underrated craft and experience that Hesta just doesn't have. You know, I'm going to go with the chalk to Linares, yeah. and I believe that there should be, a, once again, a mandate, a calling. And I've, I've asked Eric Gomez about this. I've talked to Igus Klimas about this. Lomachenko is moving up from 30 to 35. As of right now, Jorge Linares, for as much as I like him, you kind of look at that resume, it's not it's that poor. great. They both kind of need each other. Mm -hmm. Let, let's come together. Let's reach across the aisle like Tip O'Neill. I think that's I like a that fight, fight that Top Rank <laughs> and Golden Boy, they, they need to find a way to make this match up. So you've given up on the Mikey Garcia? Well, Mike is gonna, well Mikey's going to first, the, the, after Lipinets, he's going to go he's back gonna move down. He's going to He's going to fight Anthony Joshua and then the winner of Golovkin. Yeah, I don't think that's realistic. It's going to be Andre Ward's heavyweight comeback fight. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Steve. Uh, we know Lomachenko is moving up to 135. That's happening in the spring. He's going to get acclimated with a, a fight there. But then later in the year, let's do it. And that fight with Linares and Lomachenko, mm. Why not put that on ESPN? I think it'd do a good rating. Yeah. And it makes so much sense here in Los Angeles. I think that'd be a fun, fun fight. All right. Well, there you have it. That's it for this segment of 10 Count. On behalf of Doug Fisher and Michael Montero, this is Steve Kim saying goodbye, everybody.